This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Yarnmarket.com. Fabulous fashions, fast and friendly. What I'm so excited to talk to you about is how the heck did Knitter's Review get started? Uh, that, it, it was one of those ideas that came when I was facing impending unemployment. <laughs> and, um, but um, what happened was I had been editing a comparison shopping website for years. And before that I had done product reviews and uh, I was doing email newsletters, but it was all in the technology field. And um, it was, uh, we were facing our impending layoffs. It was probably six to nine months. And a guy that I worked with, his wife is a quilter. And I always have to give him credit, Charlie Darling, because he came in one day and said, uh, I've got this great idea for my wife. She's going to review quilting products. And it's going to be called Quilter's Review. And like, that's really cool. Congratulations, Charlie. And suddenly a huge light bulb went off in my head because I don't, like, I don't feel like my strength is designing as much as it is taking apart a material and really analyzing it and writing it. I'm an art history major. So that was when I realized Knitter's Review. It, it could work really, really well, reviewing yarns. And it was when um, online yarn stores were really on the rise. And I was starting to order box after box of yarn and getting stuff in the mail that didn't look anything like what I thought it was going to be. And there was no way to find out, no third party that I could go to, to like, what what is this yarn really, really like? And so I wanted to be somebody else's hands and nose to help them know what they're getting into without actually having to be in front of it. So. it. It became more of a community after that. How do you think the your little start of this really sort of triggered everyone else to get involved? I think it was just, um, it was at a time when everybody was ready to go in that direction. You know, it, it was a, a I was in a fortunate place at a fortunate time, and I helped kind of facilitate a, a, time, a, a period of it, and I'm very grateful for that. And we've come so far, it's very, very cool. Well, it's become a valuable resource for many, many knitters over the years, especially, like you said, because of online shopping. But along with the, the yarn reviews, there's quite a lot of other things that happens on the site. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, besides the yarn reviews, it's, I call it everything that shapes the knitting experience. So you've got, I've got book reviews, also tools, does, does a new needle come out? A couple times I did bags if they're very specific to knitters, because it's hard to review a knitting bag because anything is a bag. Right. But um, so tools and books and events, I write about events that people might not have been able to go to, and then um, some how-tos, but I like to keep them very general because the focus is really on the yarns and the materials. And so when there are how-tos, it's really how to make best use of these materials. It's not as much uh, about the design itself. Right. So. And you also have some great newsletters also. Yep, every single week. That's the heart of Knitter's Review, every Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> yeah, I send out the newsletter, and then there are polls, and um, there's a forum, a very active community there that I started in 2001. And um, that's really been growing too. Well, I've actually been a part of the community since it started. But what I've been interested in is how you sort of evolved that into your recent books. You have mm -hmm. uh, both the Knitter's Book of Yarn and it's now the Knitter's Book of Wool. Mm -hmm. How did the books come about? That was a really um, natural extension of what I've been doing for Knitter's Review. But it happened every November there's a retreat that I hold, the Knitter's Review retreat. And um, it was one year we were trying to figure out the program for that year. And I thought, well, it would be so much easier if I could teach something. Well, I can't teach anything. Wait a minute. And I realized that actually about yarn, that is something that I could teach. So I put together a class, and the outline was so clear and obvious, and I was so excited about it that within about two weeks after that, I had a book deal. So <laughs> that's how it happened. What, how did the Book of Wool come about? The Book of Wool, that came about while I was writing the first book. And we were already trying to think what would be a natural and useful way to continue the journey. And just um, wool, I could have 
But I was saying, well, I could write a whole book about wool. Well, there's so much information there. And we thought, well, yes, that's where to go next. And I was starting to see more knitters really getting interested in breed-specific wools. And it's something I believe in, in terms of what I would like to see grow in the United States. Um, so it, it felt good and it felt appropriate to follow up. Do you spin? I do. I do, yes. It, th that would seem like the natural progression because of the evolution that you've spent in looking at the different sheep breeds and so forth. But most yarn manufacturers don't actually label the sheep breed. Do you think that'll start to change? I think it will. I think it will. It has to start on a very small scale because to spin fiber on the scale of the really large uh, mills, they need so much fiber that it's just not possible to get um, one, one breed. that amount from one breed. But I think it's starting to change. And the availability of equipment to process smaller quantities of fiber, that's really helping. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clara, sign my book. To Cat, may wool always warm and inspire you. Clara Hart. Isn't that cool? Our next live show is on Saturday, January 30th at 6 p.m. Eastern. For more details, go to letsknittogether.com slash live. If you watched episode 64, you learned a bit about Kiviet from Muskox. Kiviet is an exotic fiber along with others like cashmere, alpaca, llama, camel, angora, bison, guanaco, yak, and vicuna. If you're like me, you're spending January knitting something a little special for yourself. Yarnmarket.com carries such exotics as Misty Alpaca Hand Paint Sock Yarn, Lux from Buffalo Gold, a blend of bison, cashmere, silk, and tensile, and even Kiviet from Windy Valley. I'm knitting these beautiful lace fingerlings from a heartstring pattern with cashmere sock yarn from Art Yarns. It's a UFO I've been saving to pick up again after the holidays. Just a little luxury. So check out yarnmarket.com for a little exotic luxury for yourself this year, and be sure to leave a comment at checkout thanking them for supporting the show. Our Let's Knit Together Ravelry group worked on various charity projects during November and December. Some people worked on projects on their own, and several joined me to create squares for a baby blanket to send to Afghan for Afghans. Debbie Bo, Paula, Jenny, Debnitz2, Linux Switch, Maltese Parakeet, and I created these 24 squares for the Afghan. I'm going to block and crochet them together. We'll show the completed blanket in a future episode before we send it on to Afghan for Afghans. I want to thank all of you who participated in this charity knit along. No matter which project or charity you worked on, your knitting made a difference in someone's life. Our Let's Knit Together Ravelry group worked to... Or, <clears throat> I'm knitting these beautiful lace fingerlings with, from a heart strength pattern. I keep getting that wrong. I'm sorry. I'll try it again. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to block and crochet them together. We'll show the... Con oh, so, so screwed it up. Yeah. Our Let's Knit Together Ravelry group. <coughs> <coughs> Frog. And action. Our Let's Knit Together Ravelry group. Oh, gosh. I think I have to get some water. <laughs>